Well, YouTube, I'm back. This is uh, part three of my day in the life of a software engineer slash actor. And I just got back from playing Hastings in Richard III at the Athenaeum in Chicago. A uh, great time. Everything went smoothly. Uh, great cast, um, great crew. It's just uh, we had like 10 people in the audience. Uh, it seats about 80 people, so... Another small small cast, but that's all right. Um, some people were gonna get drinks, but I never heard anything about that. And kind of everyone just went their own separate ways, and that's fine. Um, it's Friday night. <laughs> I'm sure people have things to do. Uh, so I I just head back, headed back myself, and stopped by the taco place. Got some tacos. Got some pizza that I've been eyeing for a while. Last time I ate this, I threw up because I was already really drunk. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and I'm back home now. And I had a lot of thoughts coming back. Basically, you know, this is the dream, right? Uh, five years ago, if you asked me then, I would never have thought, oh yeah, I will be in the city finally um, in Chicago and I'll be working a great job as a software engineer. You know, back then I had no idea I was gonna do this path. I never thought, hey, I'm actually gonna be in a play. Um, it was kind of a, a crazy dream um, and it and it, it, it's like the idea of it is so amazing but in the reality you know when you're up close and living it you know day to day it's not always glamorous right like right now um, I'm a little lonely I'm at home uh, girls over in the suburbs and I'm like okay you know I'll check out a bar see what that's fun I'll check out that arcade um, and that was fun going on the way back it's so cold now um, it was so nice to go somewhere warm on the way back and kind of make it fun because walking back a mile in the cold is no fun. Um, and it was nice to have that freedom to like actually stop by and check these places out because usually I just rush by because I need to get home, I need to go to work the next day, I need to wake up early, um, none of that. So and that was really cool, you know, but it kind of... You know, I, I watch these people, and then a lot of them are just people in the groups. They have their friends. They're just trying to, like, mainly hang out with friends. Um, and good for them, right? Um, you know, I'm not, like, ignoring friends who want to hang out with me, I don't think. Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, and it kind of reminded me of, so in 2012, back when I was in college, I went on a study abroad in Paris, which was, you know, very, uh, very privileged, of course. But um, you know, it's like your people dream of going to Paris, this romantic place, it's like, you know, paradise almost. Um, and I was there for a long time, and I had to remind myself, I'm in Paris. This is amazing, because a lot of the time, you know, I was sleeping in this bunk bed in my host family, and it's top bunk. It's really crammed. My head basically hit the the ceiling if I wasn't careful at all. Waking up, and I was like, this is. This is kind of, you know, isolating. I feel like I'm at home again. My host mom is uh, always working, just like my real mom. Uh, my host sister, you know, she's uh, she's cool, but, you know, we weren't, like, best friends or anything, of course. Um, and everyone's really nice. But it was just, oh, you know, when you have your expectations, like, set to the, to the sky, like, oh, this is going to be, an, like, I'm going to find myself. I'm going to be, like, laughing surrounded by people all the time and you know honestly with my classmates I was but something felt like I didn't have that genuine connection with you know I had great friends Nana was amazing Ryan you know we had a lot of laughs um you know had Mackenzie you know uh and you know we like hung out um I think what I was looking for is really like you know it's strange because when you're I'm sure like I look at these people from the outside you know, in their friend group, they're like, oh, I'm bored, it's just my friends, I see them all the time, oh, uh, what else, is, you know, what else is there, but I'm looking in, I'm like, oh, they look like they're having fun, I want to be part of their group, right, um, so there's always that, like, component of dissatisfaction in a way, but, and looking back, right, you kind of smooth that over, like, looking back, the farm was amazing, when I spent that four months on the farm, oh my god, those were the closest connections I've had, but let me tell you, there are a lot of days where I hated everybody, being wet, being cold, being outside, you really resented everyone for being like, ah, oh, they're not 
pulling their weight, you know, or they think they think I'm an idiot. F them, you know. So, but there were some really good moments too. Like I remember we uh, all went to Keene in town. Chris drove us there, and then we had you know Mexican place. It wasn't like the most interesting conversation. You know, I was pretty quiet, but it was really nice to just have that feeling of being in a car again with friends and going somewhere together. Um, like a little journey, a little adventure. Um, and I, you know, and there are a lot of moments where I really look forward to that. Um, at the same time, you know, yeah, it was, it was just, I know, I liked it. Um, and I think the more you're surrounded by people, the more you'll have chance for good and bad, but more good than bad, hopefully. Um, just like, you know, when you have, like I had my friend George stay over and he was like, oh yeah. Um, and there are a lot of times where I was like, George, you're not like, you know, putting the toilet paper on right. Why don't you put on the toilet paper when you're done using it? How dare you in my head? But I'm like, well, whatever. I don't want to be that annoying. And, you know, I probably should have spoken up. I need to work on that, like speaking up for myself. Um, but, you know, it's like now this room is empty. I'm like, oh yeah, it'd be nice to have someone here to like shoot the shit with. Even if we don't have that much in common, you know. Um... And it also made me think, you know, like I spend so much time working and trying to do well my job, try to think about how to get ahead, make, you know, make more money and maybe looking at apartments or new houses that will look, you know, that face the lake or what have you over a nice kitchen. And then at the end of the day, you know, I'm wondering like if I go home to that and it's empty, I would go home to this and it's empty, you know, what's, what's really the difference? Like I, maybe it's a little nicer. Maybe I can sit on a couch and watch TV instead of sitting in my bed. Um, maybe I don't have to connect my laptop to watch TV, you know, but it's it's that same if it's empty, it's empty, you know, <laughs> who wants to go to an empty house, no matter how nice it is, you know, even if it's even really nice, you're probably like, oh, I should be happy in this really nice house. It's so big. Why am I not happy to go back to it? it you know, and um, simple truth is that that's not what brings you happiness, probably. Um if anything, it feels more isolating because you're like, maybe I'm overthinking it, but, you know, depending on the location, if the location's great. Um, but yeah, so those are just some random thoughts. Um, and it just made me feel more relaxed because knowing that in the back of my head, I'm like, well, you know, I don't feel that much pressure that I have to make so much if it's just for, you know, a slightly nicer view or whatever. Um, if there's you know, kind of nothing to go back to and no purpose behind it. I mean, for kids, that's different, though. You want to give them everything. Um, yeah, so, you know, going to eat some pizza now. Uh, pretty excited. This is a huge pizza. Look at this. This is the size of my hand. That's a jumbo slice for you. All right. Have a good night.